would you put this amount of water into your worm bin? Well, if you've ever put a whole pumpkin in, you probably have. Last Halloween, after I'd finished scaring the living daylights out of the locals, I got curious as to how much water I'd actually be adding to the worm bin if I put the pumpkin in whole. The pumpkin, stuffed with leaves to add carbon, weighed 14.65 pounds. That's 13.65 for the pumpkin and one pound in weight for the leaves. This was put in a 15 litre container, holes drilled in the uh, top for air and the bottom for drainage, and it was left to its own devices for eight months. The plan, in as much as I ever have a plan, was to collect and weigh the drained water and weigh the remaining compost. This would give me an idea of how much water I would have inadvertently added to the worm bin if I'd put the pumpkin in whole, and it would also be interesting to see how much of the original volume would be lost in the composting process. The good news is my warning sign worked. This container has been pretty much untouched for the last eight months or so, since October of 17. So let's take a look inside. It feels dry and uh, um, not exactly crumbly. It's not like the normal soft, fluffy, friable vermicompost that I normally get. There's some isopods working away in here, and there's a small amount of worms. There's really no trace of the pumpkin, except for this, the very centre of the top of the pumpkin, where the pumpkin would have been attached to the vine. It feels spongy and, curiously enough for some reason, it's a very long way off from being composted. Um, otherwise there's no trace of the pumpkin at all. This is what the pumpkin and the leaves have been reduced to. From filling a 15 litre container, it's now not quite filling, it's about three quarters of the way or a little bit more, filling a one litre container. So how much water would have been added? Well, this much. A three and a two litre bottle, that's five litres. So, as I'm getting on with weighing it, I'm going to take a guess that five litres um, is roughly five kilos, which is a little over ten pound. So let's actually see what we got. And we get 10.92 pounds. And the weight of the composted material? Well, that works out at 0.79 pounds. So we've gone from a combined weight of 14.65 pound down to 0.79 pound. Percentage-wise, that's 5.3% of what we actually started out with. In other words, the pumpkin and the leaves have reduced down by 95% of their original weight. So that's uh, with the water um, removed. So how much has actually been lost in the composting process itself? Well, the pumpkins are 92% water and leaves are 40% water. So the water weight of what we started with, theoretically, 12.41 pounds. So this leaves us uh, with 2.25 pounds of material if we were just able to somehow extract the water and leave the material untouched. So we have 0.79 pound, which is mostly composted material. So the 14.65 pound that we started with has been reduced to 2.25 pound by removing the water, if you think about that theoretically. And this 2.25 pound has actually, in reality, composted down to 0.79 pound. So far, the composting process is still going on. So you can see in a small scale what is actually happening on a much bigger scale in the worm bin because we're only in this case just looking at uh, pumpkin and a few leaves. So you can imagine this on a much bigger scale in a, in a larger worm bin or in a big composting pile. And this is why your compost pile reduces in volume so dramatically. But it's also worth keeping in mind that uh, different materials, they'll break down at different rates and they'll also contain different, different amounts of uh, water. So back to the issue of the moisture or water content. Managing moisture, particularly in a small worm bin, can be a real issue, especially if you're new to using a worm bin. And it can be puzzling to know where all this moisture is coming from. So let's take a look at some of the most common food scraps that we typically feed to our worms. And we'll have a look at the content, the water content of these scraps. 
I don't think my daughter was taking that seriously at all. So there you go. If you feed your small worm bin a load of cucumbers and lettuce scraps, you may as well just take the worms out and give them a bath. Of course, an awful lot's going to depend on the amount of scraps that you feed, the type of scraps that you feed, the size of your worm bin, the worm population, your frequency of feeding, and I suppose to some extent your climate. You experience hotter weather year round. It used to fascinate me looking back at uh, videos of people who have to wet down their worm bins because the, where they live is so hot. So they water the plants and then water the worm bin to keep it moist. We never have an issue like that here in the UK because of our temperate climate. So all of these things would have to be factored in as well. And it's worth keeping in mind that an amount of liquid is completely unavoidable and almost everyone collects this runoff from the bin and they use it typically in a 1 to 10 or 1 to 20 mix with water as a fertilizer and they get absolutely excellent results from doing this but if you're ever puzzled as to why your worm bin seems to get very wet for no apparent reason uh, i hope that this video has given you some idea and that you found it useful as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.